and welcome to UK versus. I am currently not joined by Richard because he has been undergoing some acupuncture, but should be joining me very soon. For the lovely people of Twitch, you're going to get this little black box until he mysteriously appears. Uh, for YouTube, I will probably stick something over it. So, today we're going to be covering the NA regionals. We're going to be covering uh, what, what went down, the decks that made it through. And we're going to be talking a little bit about next week's regionals, uh, which we'll probably cover a little bit more if we stream on Sunday as well. It's really, really cool. I think what happened went down at NA, but I'll wait for Richard to get back there. <coughs> Ooh, I'll wait for Richard to get back before we cover that. So what I'll do while I wait for Richard is I will cover some characters because we have literally just had a character list today, which is a very, very cool character in my opinion. So we have Backup Mimic, and I think every single person expected Backup Mimic to be a thing. So we have... Ha is it Hange, Hange, uh, Zoe, or Zoe? And basically, at the beginning of your of the beginning of the game, you get to build a difficulty four backup into play. Currently, which is only two, uh, the medium titan and the small titan. I think that's right. And then, oh, looks like I'm joined by Richard. Let him get selling first. And then we also have, and then we also, uh, you got me a little bit off that. So Richard is now here, and what you can also do is, when committing to pass the check, you can commit a foundation and get plus two speed, uh, which is, oh, if it's an attack, and your backups for a printed four difficulty can cannot be attacked. Do you know what the first thing I did was when I read this character? I messaged Kyle Rock asking how long it was until we get a zero foundations uh, version of this deck. And he's started working on it now. So, how are you, Richard? How was being poked by tiny needles? Yeah, all good. Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Uh, as I don't know if Brett mentioned, I was having some acupuncture and went on a bit longer than I was expecting. And uh, yeah, because one of my friends is a is an, a professional acupuncturist. So, um, but he's over in Folkestone, so it was a bit of a, a bit of a mission to get down there and back. Um, you have a lot of friends that are yeah, specialists with needles. That is fair, yeah. <laughs> my fiance is a tattooist, and my best friend is a acupuncturist. Yeah. Apparently, I have a tiny chihuahua that wants to get on my lap. Um, okay. Um, Looks like yeah, somebody so, missed you. <laughs> yes, he did. No, it's not Yeah, so the, the reason was because Taco uh, trying to help quit smoking, which is um, a thing. So I currently want to bite some faces off because I haven't had a cigarette since like early this morning. But in theory, the, the acupuncture is supposed to help, certainly, you know, in the first couple of days in terms of um, just sort of helping with the dopamine that you usually get from like the habitual side of smoking and what have you. But how do you feel afterwards? Yeah, I feel all good. Like, uh, you know, it's not like it's a, a magic fix, a magic cure for anything, but it's there as like a something to help, right? Yeah. So that, that makes a lot of sense. I I still want to have a cigarette, but uh yeah. I I But you need to have the cigarette. You may want to have a cigarette, but you have to Yeah, it's just again it's just trying to break the pattern, break the the habitualness of it. So it's uh yeah. Oh, Any news. So, apart from that, how's your week been? <coughs> Uh, yeah, all good. Obviously, I I got old on Sunday. Um, you did again. Happy birthday! What's that? Sorry, again. Happy birthday! Thank you very much. Uh, uh, England obviously didn't do a football, but it wasn't to be expected that they were going to do a football. Um, I haven't really done much UVS wise, to be honest, recently. Um, yeah. Uh, hopefully get back into it on Thursday. Hopefully we'll get some people down for locals. Um, suppose we got our local championship 
for season two on Sunday, nice. which unfortunately I think I'll be missing because I'm in London this weekend for uh, an anniversary weekend away. Um, but uh, yeah, we had Flynn's birthday over the weekend as well because he it was his seventh birthday on Friday and he had his party on Sunday. Uh, Monday, I had my local championships down at Stronghold. Uh, mm-hmm. I got six because Godzilla just didn't let me kill anyone after round one. Were you playing City Rampage? I wasn't. Okay. I, I played it on TTS and I absolutely hated it. It did absolutely nothing for me. It just kind of sat in my hand because I, wouldn't, I wasn't drawing attacks. And I was like, well, Yeah, I was going to say, I don't like the cards, so I was yeah. glad you're not. And then I went down to locals and I played against my friend Rob. We haven't played in a year in an event. Mm. And he was playing Merc, I was playing Godzilla. I 2 owed him. Then I went up against Recovery Girl and I got stuck in a cycle of getting a handful of an attacks, getting them down to five health, and then drawing pure grey until they healed back to 30. It, right. it was the most depressing game of my life. Because all I did, I, at one point I got them to 14 and I had a walk the dog that I could kill, but I couldn't pump its speed because of, uh, for the kill. Uh, and then they just healed back to 30 by it before I saw any more attacks. It was, it was, it was, it was pain. He, he built that deck really well, fair play to Dean, but Godzilla can do 30 on three attacks. I just actually have to see three attacks. And then round three was the mirror. Uh, I was up against my friend Kai. Uh, I won the dice roll, but again, just didn't see attacks. Uh, I got turn two'd because he played City Rampage with four foundations and then proceeded to check sixes all the way down on six attacks. Just the luck was not on my side. Uh, yeah. Better now than next week, I guess, but yeah, it's kind of taken God's out of the running for me because. Given from TTS games and from real life, I'm just not seeing attacks. Yeah, if you're not if you're not gelling with a character, you're not gelling oh, with it, right? So yeah, I'm starting fun. And I have a project I have to do before regionals, which is set up this because my usual cameraman with the laptop isn't coming. That is true. Yes. So my oh, part got yourself a new laptop. So my partner, yeah, has been very nice. And we were looking online at like the Amazon Prime Day deals and stuff like that, but we just headed to our lo- local store and we picked up a pretty decent laptop. Uh, we were looking at mics, but I'm, I'm not quite sure what to get yet, so I'm probably just going to take my Snowball and I'm going to record some stuff on there. I've asked... I have asked if someone... Uh, yeah, well, you know, I've asked Enrique on Facebook mm-hmm. if he wants to replace you for the evening, but he hasn't got back to me yet. But I'll find a suit. I'll find a suitable eye candy replacement for you, Richard. Fair dues. <laughs> uh, the only other thing to mention is uh, we're now on Twitter. Because yeah, I noticed you were talking about that earlier. Uh, I I used to be on Twitter mainly because I just follow fancy football people, and that's... by that I mean American football rather than soccer. But yeah, no, that's fair. It's one of those things I was talking with uh, some other content creators from other media like cosplay and other games and twitter is a great place for get you know, meeting people who do not care about discord or facebook uh i i need more people to follow so if you are on twitter do just follow me i'll follow you right back because at the minute all i'm getting is american politics and yeah i've also been advised to make a uk versus facebook page so rather than having to keep posting personally on like the groups, I can just do it all through the page. It's it's a lot more work, but <laughs> hopefully yeah. it'll consolidate it all. So I'm back to the drawing board on what to play for regionals, but luckily we have just had one. Yeah. I um... didn't catch a, a, a lot of a lot of it because, you know, Flynn's birthday, and I imagine you missed out on a bit of it because of your birthday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had birthday and was watching football. Um, I mean, the meta breakdown I did catch, which looks roughly as I'd expect it, right? You know, there's there's no particular standout. Toga being, like, the highest representation probably makes sense. Like, she's probably one of the more straightforward decks to have played. 
Um, but yeah, Rodan, Amajiki, Endeavor, Biako, Mina, Achako being like the top numbers there, for exactly me, as we expect. For me, it's the fact that this is the second time we've seen Mina as one of the most played decks and hasn't still topped. Um, because unfortunately, I think Mina has the issue of once you get past like turn three, turn four, she really struggles. Like she's really like probably even more so than say a Chaco four. They're, they're both very much. I want to kill you on turn two and turn three, and I'm really going to struggle if you were to go any further because uh, I'm going to run out of gas. Like um, like a Chaco four ends up running out of stuff to flip, and and Mina just doesn't necessarily have the gas, and you know you've got the defenses to to stop her doing what she's doing. Um, and, you know, because Mina doesn't tend to put a lot of speed on things, so if you can block, then, you know, she doesn't do, do a lot. Um, but, you know, early on, they, they are both very, very threatening. I think Mina... But there's a lot of, as we saw, there's a lot of controlling decks. Like, because if you look at a deck like Endeavor, like Endeavor can blow you up on turn two quite happily, but actually, if it goes longer and he cycles, then then great. Like you know, he's happy with a longer game as well. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Mina also has an issue going into Ghidorah, which we did see top a lot because uh, Mina's effect is only on deal damage, whereas Ghidorah is a replacement effect, so hmm. it becomes a bit of an issue trying to take out Ghidorah. Yeah, yeah, we saw quite a lot of the. Like there were certainly some some odd decks in the, the top, and by that I mean just sort of different from from stuff we we maybe would have expected. Um, was certainly, there... like I didn't rate Ghidorah as high as it, it performed. It was very control centered top. Yes, what you say? and that's which evident... to an extent sort of makes a sense, right? Like sometimes it's you know as long as you're confident in those decks often they can be a better choice for a bigger tournament than an aggro deck that might, you know, splutter and fail on a on a on a round or two and therefore not have that consistency. Um but yeah, so we, we, we saw what, three Ghidorahs in the top sixteen? Which we given we're not 16, seeing yeah. Ghidorah in that breakdown is is a is a huge conversion, right? Right? Yeah, I mean um, uh, if well, you got to think it's gone off the percentages, and there was 160 people, hmm. so you would have had to be what there had to be 10 percent of 116. So there'd have to be at least 50, 14 there to like warrant being on the bracket. There was, yeah. like, there was less than there was probably less than 10 actual guitar players there. Oh, okay, so as we are, Jason in chat is saying, yeah, there was five, so 60 percent conversion rate. That's huge. Um, yeah, obviously we've got some Amajikis, we've got some uh, Rodans, as we expect. Uh, you know, we've got Mr. Broberg playing Pony, but, you know, as, as usual, he could take a ham sandwich probably into the top 16. <laughs> um, we've got Tam with, with Jester, with a like, really cool choice. Uh, we've got a Bionic... Got the Hawks, which I think was Funny Punch Hawks, if I'm correct. Uh, I, I think uh, I think Kai did mention that it is a like a mini Hawks or a, a mini. Uh, it is a Funny Punch mid list. Yeah, I thought I think it was Funny Punch Hawks. Um, we got David got... Toomes who is telegraphed Amigiki because he literally put up a video there. Uh, hello, Bale Dale Fail. Uh, I believe that is my friend Andrew who's coming to regionals because we keep mocking him for being a Deku simp. Okay, cool. He's really happy with the season two promos being uh, keeping Gary safe from Mirio because he now mm. knows that he can get my XR keeping Gary safe from me. Okay. <coughs> um, and yes, yeah, so the one elder to grab me only got like one Toga, right? Who got uh... knocked out in the first round. Yeah, and that's Tony, who's usually judging, I believe. Like, I think he's quite a regular judge. I hope, the, I, hope this is, I hope this inspires Murray to take part in the event. But we've got mm. uh, JCA saying Funny Punch uh, list in general did really well this event. That's... Yeah, I haven't looked through many of the, the lists themselves. I just know I know vaguely what Travis was playing under Elder. Um, 
and the I, I, like I, said, I thought the Hulk was a funny punch list. Apparently, looked too much at the rest of the list. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people and, were probably just expecting highs and lows to dominate the entire kind of battlefield because you have Black Abyss, you have Walk the Dog, you've got Vast Hybrid, Khmer Kraken. A lot of people are, are, are playing off lists. And yeah, it's... The, the fear of combat, the fear of combined firepower has put people off Funny Punch. I, I was literally talking... Yeah, that was, I was going to say, it's, it's interesting to see people turn up with Funny Punch in a in a meta where people were expecting Rodan to be popular and therefore combined firepower to be popular. Yeah. But as we see, Rodan wasn't just on Void list, right? So we've got, yeah. well, we've got oh. one, two, three, four Rodans in the tops, and only one was on Void, and the rest of them were on all. Yeah, I've been talking um, with Connor, you know, the guy that comes from London to play with you, and he's gone off his all mid list just because of combined firepower. Yeah, I think it's it's risky, but like, you know, if you're putting speed, combined firepower is a three mid block, right? So Oh, we might have to come back to this on Sunday because JCS has got all the stats from the event, which is one of the yeah. things we brought up at <clears throat> one of the things we brought up at the summit, getting these kind of stats would be so cool for content. So if you can link me or like let me have a look at those stats as well, we'll definitely come back to this on Sunday to take a look at the actual like metadata from the event because I think that's really cool that the Black Abyss decks did poorly. Probably because people yeah. kind of anticipated it. Yeah, um, I think people were coming prepared for momentum, right? Um, I mean, I guess the interesting bit for me was like the th- was three of the Rodans being all... And that was the one sim I looked at and just didn't like from a perspective of Rodan. Um, like, I was happy. Like, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of the air list, but I saw what it was doing. I obviously it was a big fan of the void list, but I never really saw something on all that I wanted to be doing. Um, so, again, I haven't really looked at the list, so I'm interested to see what they're actually, what those Rodans are actually doing, whether they're all the same, similar sort of, you know, ideas or whether they're just doing different things. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, um, the big question is... What did you think of the finals? I didn't watch it. So um, but I, I know, I, but I believe Ben had a plane to catch, right? So he. I'm, I'm, um, so this is just pure speculation. I've heard multiple stories that he had a plane to catch, or that he had work at six a.m. But either way, uh, from what I from what I've been told, Travis takes game one. Travis is about to die to the next attack on game two, so concedes. They go to go to game three, and Ben, for some reason, has something has a, uh, a has to call off game three and concedes, and Travis takes the game. Yeah, uh, got JC, but he had to work in the morning and didn't want to play get a third game. I I I get that from like a play point of view. It it just kind of I'm sucks that fi- yeah it kind of sucks that final was decided that way, uh but no shade at Ben I've played against Ben in Worlds he's a really decent player uh I imagine that he had he kind of said gone out uh, I've got work in the morning I don't want to be sat here for another two hours because Elder to go is a grindy deck especially when they're only playing like six attacks. Travis could easily sit there and defend for hours. But no, I've, it's, I've, I'm a massive Elder to go fan. I played him in the Wish tournament. I played him in the webcam regionals. I've played him at local. I've played all the symbols. Uh, I've done the sports festival champ combination that uh, Travis was playing with Big Explosion. Uh, I recently looked back at him this week and played him on life again and was told this is the most miserable game I've ever played and I didn't even put any girl power into that one yet. Uh, Travis has inspired me to take another look at Elder to go because I love this character. As soon as I saw that the top four was Hawks versus Elder to go, I went, Elder to go has got this. Elder to go does what Hawks does, but better. It's that you know, Suicide Squad meme. Uh, I'm so happy Travis got the win with this character because I've been hyped up on this character since day one. I absolutely loved him. And I think with the combined pa- with the way that Travis built it, which we will look at in a bit, uh, in a minute, it's very, very cool. 
A big yeah, shout sorry. out. Uh, I am here, just sort of throwing that around, just sorting something out. Yeah, yeah no. Um, a big shout out to everyone taking part. Uh, I wonder if David Toombs is going to keep telegraphing what he's playing at events. It does make it a lot easier for people to know exactly what to play against it and to do when they go up against him. Uh, massive props to Tam playing Jester Life. Caught people very off guard and was a very cool build. I know Tam has been playing Jester Life for a while. Uh, has won some of the webcam events that he that they host with Jester, and it was great to see these off meta characters still doing really well. Uh, Pony, Pony's one I'm still not too decided on. I can see the appeal, and someone has challenged me to test out Pony, but yeah, I'm I'm struggling to come up with what I should play with next week. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Pony's just... It, she presses a lot of the buttons, right? She's got a lot of buttons on face to press. And that I think that's the sort of thing that likely very much appeals to the likes of Mr. Broberg, just having yeah. a lot of those buttons to press. I'm honestly thinking of playing something that's cr- got chronostasis trigger symbols, just in case I went into God Hours, because as they pointed out, he had a 60% turnover rate. If I can, ju- even if it's just the one time, if I play a character that can just cross this as trigger a Ghidorah. Yeah, but they just block that one, right? Um, well, they, ha- they have to completely block it. Yeah. yeah. And that's um, <laughs> Yeah. Like, I don't know what I play. Like, I think... Like, I think Toga's very good. Like, you just need to make sure you can deal with these um these lists like you know the likes of like i don't know whether like the older sort of style list was going to be a a meta player or whether it was like a one of those i don't decks that did really well for a an event but is it necessarily then gonna be a wider player in across the meta given um, how popular toga free has been at past events i would not feel comfortable taking a six attack deck into that meta because Deception Dagger just turns you off. You lo- Yes. Yeah, I mean... I, I mean, I, when I played Togo at uh, my local qualifiers, I played Confused in the sideboard and hmm. for Deception Daggers because I wanted to take my opponent's attacks away from them. If my opponent's playing a six-attack deck, I get to go, cool, I'll side in my Confused, I'll keep my Deception Daggers, and I'll take all your options away from you. Yeah. And if it's just against a combined firepower deck, you just start removing combined firepower with uh, Deception Dagger. Yeah, like I think I think Toga's a totally reasonable option. Um, I think you just probably need to tech her out a bit um, so that you're not just necessarily playing, you know, l- looking at the meta you're going into. Um, but that's I, just I it, that, isn't know, it? I any mean... of these decks are going to be good, like Amajiki or Endeavor. Again, it's just trying to work out what you think that metagame is going to look like and therefore what you can take that maybe has the most answers. Yeah, I mean, um, 50, what, 14, 15 people thought the exact same thing and Togo was the most represented, mm-hmm. but only one person qualified with it. So maybe uh, take a little look at Togo. Yeah, I mean, partly that might be because she's very uh, momentum hungry, right? And that's probably one thing people were, were thinking, right, okay, we got Togo, we got Amajiki, We've got plenty of these momentum characters, so we want to maybe have momentum hate, and we're going to be going into it with momentum hate, and therefore she, you know, struggles a bit into that. I can I can understand that. Togi also does have her own momentum hate, uh, but yeah, I can definitely get behind that. I mean, Endeavor's probably still the raw best character, right? Like, it's probably hard to argue that he isn't. I mean, however, obviously, there's no Endeavors in this top list, right? So, um, how many endeavors would play? Six percent. So, yeah, you're talking about you're talking about ten endeavors being played. Yeah, and there wasn't a single conversion. No. Um. Yeah, that yeah, I mean, that's fair. Endeavor is not great into King Ghidorah or into Rodan because, uh. He doesn't get to really do much against them. Uh, 
Yeah, it's a hard one. Like it, again, it's, it, you're trying to make the meta call, right? Yeah. And who's going to have like the better deck into that meta, and, and like also what you're sort of happy playing. The other thing is, like you're saying, Endeavor doesn't really have momentum hate. He has great momentum out, but doesn't have a way to get my point off momentum, which is why I'm a cheeky is a bad hit. Well, he does. Well, as long as you're playing on Earth, you've got instant charming flash. Oh, yeah. But then you've also got to hope your opponent's playing lows. What? you got to hope your opponent's playing lows for you, for the block side of it, or if you play... You just play it, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm just saying at the same time, uh, if you're holding, if you're trying to get through. Uh, big thing that we did announce on Friday that has been going around, well, not Friday, on Saturday, is the f- the first 10 new players to approach Card Goblin will get a 1,000 cards from, of universes for free, which is something that I've arranged with Richard. I'm going to I'm gonna cover half of the cost, and Richard's going to cover the other half. And we're going to give new players a thousand universes cards for free, uh, as well as Card Goblin are donating a lot of cards to local charities and local hospitals in their area as a way to give back to the community and share, it kind of as an also incentive for new players to come to the regional. They don't have to take part in the regional, but it's a great experience for them. And if they come to the regional, we're going to give them some cards to walk away with as well. I think that's really, really cool. And it was Richard came to me with the idea, and I was like, "Yeah, let me throw some money at you to make sure some players get that for free as well." Yeah, cool. <clears throat> uh, so uh, I think Togi's issue here isn't great against control player who build down three for. Yeah, you just get that issue of players building to ten and going cool. Your first attack I, is the biggest issue. The rest I can get through. Yeah, yeah. Toga needs to be getting some early momentum, like, and getting things like deception daggers. So, like, her first attack can be like a stun five, in which case, like, she can get there. But yeah, like, they, they've all got their weaknesses, right? I don't think yeah. they're, and and that's it. If you look at that meta game, if you look at that top sixteen, I don't, th- you know, we don't have like a younger Tagore, like an obvious bloody deck to play, right? Um, I think the most obvious one would probably be Rodan. Yes, but even then, like you know, again, he's topped on two different symbols, right? Topped on two different um, symbols. Topped in Oce- uh, Oceana. Uh, I'm surprised Godzilla didn't make it through here. I've been having such okay. Issues. So it looks like the Rodans are actually doing funny punch, or at least two of the. Uh, so oh, we got two on order. Sorry, two on all, two on void. It looks like. Um. um one, two, three on order. On all. On all uh, okay. It looks like one. Andrew Porat is not on all. He's on void. Yeah. Um. I mean, uh, I find where I put it. Yeah. But second back here. So again, like similar to the, but yeah, like Andrew is playing void, but doesn't have um. Thingamajig, the card. Funny punch? No. Combine firepower. Come Sorry, my power. brain went blank for a minute again. Which you look at um, and nor is Gavin, right? So the two void, and for me, one of the reasons for playing void was the combined firepower. Neither of them were playing it. Maybe I was wrong. Um, See, when I heard Travis was on Younger to Go and Elder to Go, especially on Death. I was expecting a Tri-Gravity Beam loop deck. Mm. But this deck is just... Well, it's just trying to... It's either trying to make Twisting or True 100% into a massive fucking bomb. Yeah. And say, you now can't interact with it via whatever things he's got. So, for example, Sports Festival Champ and stuff like that. And just says, okay, you can't interact with it. Catch. Yeah, and all these uh, assets and, fun- and actions become attacks. So the moment yeah. you check one of these bad boys, you can just pop off. Avoiding um, conflict lets you draw. Teamwork is just good value. Combine firepower, you can discard, get your twisty online. 
Yeah, like not as fast. We know how good that card is. Like and again, it's, and, and also like when you're running six attacks, you're checking fives, right? You're checking fives, checking sixes. So it means you're always building strong. Um, oh, definitely. I mean, and... You've got a lot of mill in here as well, and I like the forcing surrender combined firepower combination. Hmm. Because you just play the combined firepower, pop it off, flip the uh, forcing surrender, put it back in the bin for your next attack. Which allows you to play it again if you can remove again, which we think yeah. is like foresight. Uh, the yeah, you've got uh, twins bond as well. You've got a lot. You've got a lot of remove that to just keep popping off. Lots of control. It's, it's yeah. I mean, like and things like sports festival champ, right? There's a good chance the top three are going to be foundations in this this deck. Like you know, we're talking. 44 out of 69 foundation, so good chance. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not a deck I would like to play, but obviously it's doing the thing, right? It's the it, idea of... This is the kind of deck that Travis has been playing at locals or been playing with the team for a long time to hone. This is not the kind yeah. of deck I can pick up today and play next week. No, it's just trying to build a stage and sculpt a hand where he goes twisting um, Sports Festival champ, make a shitload of speed and damage, and then switch it with El Tigre away. So now, you know, we, we're going to make a twisting. We're going to Sports Festival champ. You can't block it. You can't just reduce for the damage, right? Yeah, you can't reduce damage. You can still reduce play teamworks, play combined powers, play avoiding conflicts. And almost punch and Judy them, right? And that's sort of we're trying to do not flask, do all this sort of shit. Yeah. We've got League of Villains and Lunar Rings to deal with like assets and we've got showdowns to cancel hand traps. And then once we've got the speed high the you know, the attack high enough, we're gonna then use Elder Goro to swap the speed and damage. Oh look, it's now a twenty five speed, twenty five catch. Yeah, and you've got League of Villains for you know, for cancelling enhances. You've got yeah. a lot of actions to keep popping off as well, which lets you pump it up. You know, you've got showdowns to cancel barrier shields. Genkai's um, Guidance. Yeah. Uh, runaway. Love showdowning a runaway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My only takeaway from this is, I know as, as much as it helps 100% uh, Unleashed, there's no deadlock in this deck apart from the big fall. Yeah, I mean that might have been like, but the, I guess his feeling is if you're ta if you're taking the game long enough to go to deadlock, my deadlock is I've now got loads of time to sculpt and kill you, uh, right? And that that's possibly where you know how he's thinking about it. Um, I guess I'm I'm just looking at this from like so I've been playing part of what, one of the things I've been playing is this gin control list, which is inspired by the rumors of the monster gin that's been being played in Sheffield. Mm. And honestly, I think if that deck came up against this one, the gin just wins the, uh, uh, outright. Not to take away from Travis, Travis played this brilliantly, but looking at what the control levels of this gin deck is that has been put together, I honestly think that this deck would absolutely struggle against it. Hmm. Quite possibly. I mean, like, you know, you if you cancel their sports festival champ enhance, right? Well, it's not unique, so you're gonna have uh, if you if you're just building out, you're gonna have more than one. Deck. Yeah, but like you're committed, discard a card, so they might they might not see it. They might only have one in play. So, like, you know, and again, this isn't like a the, it, all all decks, all cards have answers, right? Yeah, it's just a case of seeing them. Um, so, you know, and then he's got ways. That, so, like, you know, little combos. So things like Aragon Fighter, right? It's just a mill one, which is probably pretty reasonable just a button to press an elder just to get the stuff in your discard that you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Sports Festival does the same thing because I believe you, uh, it lets you, if it's a top three card, you can pop off with that. Yeah, but what Aragon Fire also lets you do is, you know, if they've got a good stage answer to whatever it is you're doing, 
you know, you just blow it up to an immortal shapeshifter or to Elder de Goro or, you know, what have you, and just say, actually, I'm going to seal this foundation that's actually a problem. And so, you know, he's got plenty of answers to answers. That's what sort of, you know, he's got a game plan of, I'm going to make a fucking huge twisting or to 100% unleashed, and then I'm going to kill you with it. And then you're going to have to have answers to it, so I'm going to have answers to your answers, i.e. League yeah. of Villains, Showdown, uh, Sports Festival Champ, Arrogant Fighter, um, what else have we got in here? Like, Big Fool could I mean, you've be got like fighting a thing control with to it. help you attack, get through if you do try to block it out to end aggression. You've got Kicker's Age um, to end aggression. Yeah, you know, you've got to find for control and Kago's Age to make them sort of have to commit out on their turn, right? Um, yeah, no, I mean, like I said, this, we could just be completely looking at it all wrong. This looks like such a niche rogue deck that Travis has put a lot of hard work into yeah. making work and i am so I, i'm happy for travis that he was able yeah, to take it's, elder it's, to go it's, that it's sort of a control deck but in a way it's actually more of a combo deck right you're trying to, and it, it's a twisting as your combo deck yeah um and like you know he's travis is obviously doing god's work to try and finally get that fucking card banned um, I mean, it's it's getting close to the retro levels. Uh, well, it does when we've now got an, uh, an action that puts itself into bloody momentum and gives twisting as your EX two. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is that is so dumb. I, yeah, Azure is Azure's definitely getting back. Well, I mean, Azure's only got six months. Azure's always months. been one step away from the fucking gallows, realistically. He has um, been dodging. My boy has been dodging bands like uh, like Neo in, from the Matrix dodges bullets. Yeah, I I, I got to worlds just because Dabby One abused that so much uh, in the year year one. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a cool deck. Like I said, I I, don't, I I would say this is more of a combo deck than a control deck. Obviously, it's universes that aren't necessarily like black and white. What things are doing. Um, but I think actually what we probably can see from a lot of these decks, I don't think combined five powers is any of the problem people think it is. No, I mean, most of the was. people aren't even um, it. look at the Ghidorah list. Ghidorah's yeah. not Ghidorah's running again, still quite controlling. Love seeing a blue flame surge, but we're not yeah, seeing. I mean, he's running a flat sixty again. It's just sort of a void list with with void good stuff, right? Um, in terms of the attacks, yeah. um, not necessarily leaning too hard into the sort of Ghidorah 10 health thing. You know, we've got a couple in terms of sort of the Darkness Flame, and, you know, we're only playing one Dragon of the Darkness Flame, which is fine because it's a two check. Uh, and then, hello, you know, Barton pretty... and Rostos, yeah. Universes gets a lot easier if you don't check a lot of five, a lot of threes, and and you're running four yeah. checks and you're running lots of fives, you're kind of sitting pretty. I want to take a, so, the, yeah, the Hawks list is literally just a funny punch with a feather stomp. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's funny because, like, you know, so we have to play mono mids, um, no. and like feather storm, hawks, feather, hawks, feather, focus attack is probably pretty good, like. A lineup. Uh, it's a bold, certainly a bold choice into combined. You know the expectation of a lot of combined firepower is. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely a big risk. But then again, when you're playing focus attack as your third or fourth attack, has yeah. my camera gone weird? Oh, what's up in there? Uh, oh. It, it said it from the new uh, media source. Okay. But yeah, uh, if you go... Can... Barton, uh, just to answer the question, no. So um, this... I think... So, uh, Barton, this is Universes. It came out before U uh, Union Arena. So we, we, see we have MHA similar to Union Arena, but we also have Yu Yu Hakusho, Critical Role. Uh, we've... Get an attack on Titan soon. 
We've just got Godzilla in, into the fray, which is what we're looking at. You know, which is what we're just looking at with Ghidorah. Uh, I don't know if you you know, it's even got a set out in English yet. Maybe it has. I was going to say I don't. I think it might be in the US, but I don't think Union Arena is over in the UK yeah, at all. UK are very far behind. But uh, no. Oh, will we be playing Union Arena? Uh, I probably won't be playing Union Arena. I'm kind of all in on this. Uh, but Lady Naga, De- Lady Naga decks always look cool. Uh, English set starts in October. Uh, no, I can't. I can't. I can't in October. Uh, Tekken drops. <laughs> Tekken drops in October. We get Vigilante Deku in October, and then we get Star Trek Lower Decks, which I'm so hyped for in December. Uh, let's take a look at the pony list. The so pony was playing on Earth, and hey, Bro Burgers playing Giantification Swing. I love Giantification Swing. I cannot express how much I love... You know how much I love this card. Yeah, um, as, as Apple was saying in chat, the 80% forcing him into deadlock and then finally punch deadlock. I mean, like that's what 80% can do, right? Um, I, I, I still have flashbacks to going into deadlock against funny punch and Nats. But yeah. Um, so this is just a draw lots of cards list. Uh, I mean, it's a Falling Skies list, right? With a couple of outliers, like, you know, just a single Gigantication and single Arm of the Wolf. But other than that, it's a I'm going to Falling Skies you, so, it's... you know, four X and the good ones. I like that. Your free jury. So, Everything... you know, playing a lot of ways of, like, clearing and... yeah. Things that work well with clearing, so Spirit Slash obviously is very good. But with, you're also with, running very good check it. hack. Giantification Swing combos with every single attack in this deck. They are yeah. all charged. Again, only playing the one off, which is which is fair in a in a um, a Falling Skies deck, but just as a one off, I think is totally reasonable. Uh, Barton, I did not know that June was forty four. I uh, she looks very good forty four. Apple has been keeping keep up on date on that. Uh, only one of Shinojin's message, which is really cool. Uh, number 23, Pro Hero, for additional draw power. And you get speed because you get cowards. That's pretty that's cool. Yeah, I mean, just playing a lot of um, one-offs. Faith Shields uh, and Instant Shining Flash is on the side. Instant Shining Flash is... I'm so glad that's back. Yeah. This is actually a really, really cool list. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just a kind of a lot of individual different foundations, some of which are going to be good, some of which one of you aren't. And, you know, that's fine in a list where actually sort of almost dead cards in your hand can be just, okay, I'll pitch them, right? Yeah, you pitch them. Uh, I'll don't... get my whole encounters with them. You've got any means necessary which allows you to, mm-hmm. uh, it allows you to draw again. Yeah, uh, you've got some good new train method synergy. You've got prehensile tail to pick up momentum or give. Uh, is, that's just put uh, give you a slam throw, which means if you go to Delok, you can have an armor with the wolf with throw, which you know is deadly. Mm-hmm. Uh, spirit slash, spirit slash. After this card leaves your card pool, build the top card you deck face down, and I believe Pony says lose three. Yeah, move three, clear one card from your card pool. So you yeah exactly again there's there's just sort of things that work with what she's doing right so yeah, um, yeah I mean I, you know I think it's be cool. this deck because you're gonna be filling up your discard quite quickly referee jury lets you get hyper well no I I I really I like this list mm-hmm. that's a really really cool oh, yeah I'm I'm gonna have to give this list a try I'm gonna have to add it to my testing list out. My testing list is so long. Uh, yeah, I've not seen any of the stream games. Today I was at the gym and I caught up on uh, Acolyte instead. Love the ending of Acolyte. Not going to go into it because it's well within spoiler uh, season. Yeah, uh, uh, just looking at Tam's list on Jester. So doing Storm of Arrow stuff, right? Um, as you'd expect. Yeah. Um. 
uh, you know, doing the, the, the combo of Instant Shining Flash into Storm of Arrows, because Instant Shining Flash is a ranged weapon, and obviously, <clears throat> usually you'd be playing Storm of Arrows on a six there, but Instant Shining Flash lets you play it on the five. So that's sort of something that I want to test. I've, I've built uh, an Endeavor list trying to do the same thing um, on Earth. Um, the Dragon Strike's an out. interesting one. Well, do I want to test it out on Thursday? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just flipping their answers, right? Yeah. Um, and it's probably some deadlock, it's momentum out. Um, like, it, it, I think it does a reason out, right? So it's like, I always get to flip their best card um, and flip yep. their answers. Got decent deadlock and, as well. Yeah, and like, what other deadlock have we got in this deck? I mean, it might just be a case of that's our main uh, deadlock option. Oh, we've got death maneuvers. Yeah. Don't enhance your weapon. Your attack, the weapon attack gets plus one speed, plus one damage. That's yeah, I mean, death maneuvers enough. is a fine deadlock. Uh, we've got that's a muscular, not deadlock. But yeah. again, like pump up isn't doing anything other than flip one foundation. If this attack is blocked, seal one foundation. Like we're we're definitely trying to get rid of their stage answers, right? We're you know we're, we're doing a lot of stuff that we're we're trying to make sure that whatever they've got in stage. So we're trying Apple, to... <clears throat> Apple saying that the idea <clears throat> was to use Trickster's blessing to fill the bottom of the deck with six checks, and then essentially either stall out or play the game, you know. And if he won, he won. But then he when he came to like the last. 10 cards of his deck, he knew that he could just sit there looping Storm of Arrows because the bottom of his deck was all six checks. It's a very technical thing because Trickster's, I love to, I do love Trickster's Blessing and I do think that's a great use for it. It's also anti stun hate, which is, you know, is great. Uh, Defiant Stance, which we read, we read is on the use as well. That's really not a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, you know, he's got into the top 60 and done very well with it, yeah. so... Um, and, you know, I think Tam's been playing a lot of, uh, you know, the Storm of Arrows of Jester list, so, you know, again, very practiced with it. Let's take a look at Tony's Toga list. Yeah, was Tony doing anything crazy? Uh, uh, no. I mean, only playing one <laughs> gouging needle for a start. I think that's fine. I don't know. I'm a big fan of Gouge Needle, just as a low that is also a zero high block with the powerful three. I'm a big fan of Gouge Needle. I um, mean, Twirling Needle is your big thing. Deception Dagger is your big thing. The main issue is what do you cut in this list for more Gouge Needles? I think you could own. I think I think I, I'm happy playing three Walk the Dogs in Toga. I um, guess. I think you never want to open with it, so I think I just want to see three. And it's not something you ever want to stuff into your momentum. Like, I think you play the four deceptions and the four I, black but abysses. With, with two dark tournament looms and one ambush first, I kind of do want to stuff what the dog is momentum. Yeah, again, I just wouldn't. I'd always rather have a deception dagger or a black abyss. Like, deception dagger and black abyss, like, walk the dog is probably my third option, and that's only, totally. I don't even necessarily only grab that if I pick it up. If I can pick it up. Tony being an absolute legend, playing Dreaming of the Reward. Do you remember when I was memeing on I saying, I want to play this? Yeah. So, Dreaming of the Reward as a twice tug response. Flip, add one card from your hand to your card pull face down. After your non for uh, attack deals damage, add it to your hand. So it just means that you get to pick up an attack and play it again. If it, uh, if it gets to deal damage. Yeah, uh, and, and you're like it's a momentum deck, right? So actually, the enhanced commit, I'll have an extra card to block with, right? Yeah, that is so very cool. Uh, it's I tried to make it work with things like uh, blue flame torment and stuff. Uh, it just never did because the moment people saw Dream of the Reward, that immediately became their target. Yeah, I don't like crowd stalling. I'm not a fan. I think that card is like win more and not good enough. And those cards I'd rather play, but clearly. Uh, it worked for him. Yeah. Um, 
and like struggling in the sideboard over a crowd darling in the moment, like just madness, madness. I say. Um, I mean, yeah, it's it's a very refined deck. Tony has clearly made decisions that have got him to top sixteen. Uh, the two oh, game cards on the yeah. side, two more, two more game cards on the side. Uh, this card deck draws a lot of cards. Um, does it though? I mean, it draws. What? He's got seven draw power in his one checks. Yeah, I'm not uh, playing. Um, he's got three with. Not the... playing chivalrous though, right? I think I was playing chivalrous in mine. Yeah, but would you want to give your opponent a card? Who cares? They don't have any foundation to block with. Uh, but like like uh, chat was saying, after turn three, turn four, they do. But yeah, yeah. Like, again, there are good and bad situations for every single card, but I always wanted that option. I'd much rather have an extra card to play an extra attack. Um, like, I, I also liked a cheeky not swask in Toga. I would like to say the second cape, but uh, um, I think second cape's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I I played the second cape generally in like a sideboard, um. <laughs> but again, I think there's a lot of like, you know, is where you think the meta game lies and where you think what you should. The you know, only play. thing I would be playing different in, in Tony's list, uh, is I think it's Chivalrous Thief. Uh, yeah, maybe just as a you know your own kind of like um, momentum hate. I think is reasonable. Yeah, like I think three broken psyche main is quite a lot. Um, obviously, not playing forced quirk in the main. I obviously yeah, I struggle to not put struggling in the main. Um, the same with chivalrous. Like he's not playing incredible display, which and incredible display is. Incredible. Yeah. Um, uh, when I, so I was talking with uh, Chris Smith, you know, he, he's a massive Toga player. And before my local championship, we were talking about the deck. And one of the things I said is protecting Yukina and Incredible Display is an insane combo, and I love it. Because it's perfect throw hate that lets you keep recycling it in Toga. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I just think Incredible Display is so very, very good. And. I'm yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, Tony knows what he's doing um, and got where he is. It's just like, it's not the list I would personally run. No. Um, in, but that's where I think there is certainly play to the Toga lists. I think there is certainly choices to be made. I think there isn't necessarily like just a stock list you can just run with. Um, like, I think, you know, there's, if we, for, a, for a Toga list, I think you can probably say there's maybe. 30 to 40 cards that I think every list will be running and then it's like to pick your flavour after that as in terms of what you what you like and what you think the meta game is going to be that you're going into. Oh, definitely. That's, that's just it. Uh, this is one of the issues I'm having at the minute with choosing a deck is unlike in last season where it was I'm going to play to go because it's a better version of Dabby 1 in my eyes. There's nothing that's sticking out to me. There are so many good options and I'm trying to find something that fits my playstyle, and I'm really struggling because we have so many options, and we're about to get over 300 cards before the next one, which is going to make it even harder to choose a deck to play. Yeah, I mean, just pick whatever one it plays Chaos the best, right? I, um, I do like the fact that we, in 12th place, Zach Bargary, we've got a Chromus Task deck. That does make me happy. we got a Chromus Task deck? Yeah. Oh, I've got... He's, he's, he's bionic, right? So he's just removing no. shit. Uh, I've, got, I've got a video queued up on YouTube, basically. I have now, I think, three videos that if I don't have content ready to go that day, that I can drop at a moment's notice, which is... And one of which is... Koemma's Task and King Ghidorah. Mm -hmm. Because that, I, I, I suppose I love Bionic, I think King Ghidorah does it better. Yeah, I keep wanting to basically play like some sort of death deck with four, with 
four deception daggers and four crevice tasks. And like, that's about as far as I ever get in a list. And I don't know which one to do it with, but like. King Ghidorah. Honest to God, King Ghidorah is going to be great. Does he got, did he got death? King Ghidorah should have death. Are you sure? He should have all the combined firepower symbols. It's his card. Yeah, evil, void, and... Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm never going to look it up. I'm just sure. Okay, I'm going to look it up because I don't believe you. Wow. The I mean, I'm, I'm wrong, but I... Yeah, I, <laughs> I just couldn't think of it. Yeah. So you could do it with King Ghidorah, right? King Ghidorah could come as task. And what I was thinking, my thinking behind it was... If you've got the combined five powers and you discard already, you just go get Azores. But is I love oh you can go get your best attack, you can go get a jaw jammer or something and throw No, it. just get deception daggers and keep looping them and keep burning out all their attacks. That's my plan. I just I I don't want to win the game, I just want to make their lives hell. That's fair, that's fair. Because you also get to name the thing the part of the video I've got ready to go is one of the great things about Quema's task is your opponent doesn't pull the cards out of their deck. You get to look at your opponent's deck. You pick up your opponent's um, deck and you go through their deck to look for these cards so you get information on everything that's in your opponent's deck. Read the wording. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you just have to not be a dick about it in a tournament situation, right? What do you mean be a dick about it? It's literally how the card works. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you still need to like in theory that's still an opponent's property. In theory, um, I'm not. I'm not saying like destroy their deck or no, 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 no. What I'm saying is it's free information. You get, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I guess my Twitch is looking. We my Twitch saying we're saying we're offline. <clears throat> there we go. That's better. Yeah. So what you get to do then is. If you're in top cuts, you get to find out what's in your opponent's hand because you have their deck, you have their remove pile, you have their discard. You can work out what's in their hand. You can, yeah, and count. like, and that's one of the situations where I'm like, look, can we shortcut this? I've got the deck list. I can look at your deck. I can look at your discard pile. Can you just show me your hand so I don't have to ah, do the math? But you can't do that because we've still got face down foundations. There could be attacks down there. You can't. You can't know for sure. Uh, yeah, I guess so. But you can, it allows you to have a lot of free information and getting to look, especially in and in Swiss, when you get yeah. to look through your opponent's deck and see what they're trying to do in game you one. You just need to make sure you're not just fucking stalling. No, no, no. Um, yeah. you've, got, you've got to the do thing it. About, the thing that annoys me about Kremlin's task is you basically only get to do the fun thing twice, right? Yes. You get to do the fun thing. Because you, remo uh, you remove it after you play the form, and you remove it after you play the ability, and you need one remove to do it. Yeah. So, and you need one to so, discard, and discard pile as well. So, like, in order to do it, there needs to be one in remove, one in discard pile. So, you only get to do the fun thing twice, but like, an action cancel on its own is probably still pretty reasonable. Yeah, I mean, um, we, we're living in a world where, uh, Runaway is rampant. Showdown's rampant. <coughs> it's Genkai's. It's Genkai's, exactly. Uh, in combined power. I, I guess you're not using combined, combined firepower, but there's I a mean, lot of I mean, it could come up, right, in terms of, um, like, you know, that's say they've only got one. They need to be able to block with a thing. They do their one off incubating or run down activation. So I'm going to block with this thing. It's like, one, I'll cancel it. So, because it says an ability on action card. So you can cancel the the response on it to say, no, they can't block with it anymore. Or, you know, they play it to get the last bits of damage on something. No, I'll cancel it. Like, the reason action I like, cancels are going to be good. The reason I like this in Ghidorah is because if you see it early, you can review it. Then, if you, then if you see it in your set, if you see this very, very early, you review it. Say you draw another one, you then get to go, awesome, uh, I'll remove it. And then you're sat there going, I just need to draw my third. And I get to get rid of your best card. Yeah. I think it's, I, I really like it. And especially now that we have 
a lot more spot removal. Uh, I think it, I don't think it's a toxic issue like that's going to be broken, or else they'd have addressed it like they did address uh, Shishi Wakamaru. But I think it's something that isn't being utilized enough, and I'm really glad that a Bionic Menace has been utilizing it. Yeah, yeah. Again, I think maybe I might try and brew something with Ghidorah, Deception Dagger, Kremlin's Task, any other cards on death that remove cards. Does Bionic Menace have order? That is question. Uh, Mecha got to the Bionic Menace. Yeah, he was playing. On, he's playing on order. Oh, he's playing order. Uh, I guess he's running Final Smash. Uh, no, no. Because you can final yeah. smash, put Kremer's task on top of your deck, remove the two, and then you've set it up perfectly. Yeah, but no, it wasn't. That's a weird one. I think. But yeah, no, my head. I, I've been sat here trying to make Kremer. I, I, one of the things I like to do is sit, is sit sometimes and just theorize on what the cool card combinations are. Uh, I think we better wrap up because uh, I just realized we're over ten o'clock and I've got stuff I actually need to do this evening. Uh, but best of luck in uh, on Sunday. Uh, well, I'm probably not playing on Sunday. But but, yeah, I'm sorry. But, uh, I take it we're not streaming then if you're away for the weekend. Uh, I I might be back in time. I'm probably back in time to stream. For if it's your anniversary, mate, take the night off. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I mean, we're going obviously Saturday and then coming back on Sunday, so I'm probably back in time for the evening, but I will have to let you know. Don't worry, well, don't worry too much about it because we are going to be back next Tuesday with Zoe to talk about uh, the new Attack on Titan art. Um, we're going to be talking about the chromes. We're going to talk about the design, and we've got and some... talk about accessibility. Yes, remember. yeah. I got it. when I was to, when uh, I was talking with UVS about what questions we we're going to ask. I made to make sure that we brought up accessibility, so they're, they're well aware that we're going to be talking about it, mate. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Uh, very cool. I'm, Again, it's not like I want to grill them and no, no. sort of rake them over coals, but it's just it's something that you know I think we're not we're not gotcha about. journalists. We're never going to have someone no. here with the intent of trying to catch them out in something. We just want the community to. Ha- we just want to be a fun little community podcast sort of stream, and it, with members of the community coming on, with VBS coming on, with any anyone coming on, really. Uh, very cool. So we're going to be up with Zoe. Then I will be trying to uh, w- once I get this laptop set up, I will might go live on the Friday for region of regionals where I do some practice with DMS, uh, and then I'll try and go live a little bit for more for the weekend if I can figure out this new laptop. Uh, yeah. Do you have a game for us, Richard? Uh, no, because mm. I well, yes, well, I could actually. Um, I did miss this Monday because I was shattered after the weekend, so I didn't go. But I did. We did play other board games on the Friday rather than Frosthaven, uh, just because one of our our usual crowd couldn't make it. So uh, we played Civilization. Oh, what is the subtitle? It's the, basically the latest Civilization board game. Ooh, that's um, fun. Oh, there's a bajillion one. So there's, there's a bajillion civilization for games. Um, let me have a look. What is it called? A new dawn. That's the badger, uh, which I enjoyed. I think it had some. I think there are flaws with it, um, but it's um, abstracts a bunch of the the sort of civ stuff. Um, but it's still very much like a civ style board game. I think you very much want the expansion with it to make it actually a real game to play. Um, unfortunately, sometimes that's a thing with board games. But um, yeah, I I enjoyed Civ. Um, I'm a big Civ fan. I've played a lot. Of, I've got like well over a thousand hours of Civ Five. I'm very yeah. interested to see how they try and capture that. I understand like the combat side of putting it into a board game. But the tech trees and stuff like that, I think, would be very cool. Um, I get so the the way it does it is a uh, if if anyone is board gamer like uh, if they've played Arc Nova, it's another very popular board game. It's very similar sort of action 
selection. So you have your set of five or six actions in front of you. So they'll be like, you know, tech, move troops, trade stuff, like whatever the, the actions are. And you've got them in effectively like a hierarchy, sort of one to six in front of you. And the higher it is towards the right is effectively the better the action is when you take it. So the further it is to the right, the more. So if it's in the six, you get or a five, whatever, you get a value five of the action, but then it goes to the bottom and everything else then shifts up. So that's you can now take the action the next turn, but it's now a value one. So it's trying to manage those and the techs are done via effectively upgrading those action cards. So it's not like you don't get everything as you do from like, you yeah. know, playing still in the computer game. A lot of it is abstracted down to this stuff. That makes um, sense. Well, uh, we'll wrap up now because Universe is the main channel's live uh, with mm-hmm. Levi's demo, and they've currently got uh, Irwin versus Haig, which seems really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, good job. Uh, good catching up, Richard. If you do have any ideas of what, other than Togo, I should be playing with next week, do hit me up. And for the, those here still watching, we'll be yeah. either back Sorry, on Sunday. Older, right? Hmm? Play Elder. Play your version of Elder. Like I could. I could I, no. I could play Life Elder. Connor Connor hated it. Not as much as playing against Jin, but he hated playing against Elder. Yeah, that's fine. If as long as you're confident that he can win games, like and you can play it over over a long day. I'm not confident yeah. anything can win games at, at the moment. But uh we'll we'll head off, we'll catch you in a bit and enjoy the Attack on Titan content over on the main channel. Peace out, everyone. Do all the things, algorithmic things. I'm followers on Twitter now. Bye.